Hey everybody, today's a big day because we finally get a chance to learn the true nature of the real numbers. We're gonna call it the main fact about the reals. Well, we've been spending a whole lot of time on decimals and we kept saying that decimals, decimals, they're the key to understanding the real numbers. And now we're gonna be able to reveal why. It turns out that every real number is a decimal, possibly in disguise. All right, what do we mean by that? Well, if you take a number like five, we know that we can just write it as 5.0. That looks a little bit more like a decimal. That's what we mean by in disguise. Better yet, here's a fraction. That doesn't look like a decimal, but we know that we can write it as a, a decimal in the form of 0.5. And lots of other mixed numbers with half in it, like three and a half, we know them as decimals as 3.5. Looking good? Other fractions like three-fourths, well, we know that one is a famous percent, right? At 75%, which means 75 hundredths, and game over. There's our decimal, 0.75. As a matter of fact, a lot of fractions we can simply convert into decimal form just by anti-simplifying. That's how we got the three-fourths and the one-half uh, back a few lessons. So let's look at that a little bit more closely. Let's say you had a number like three-fifths. Well, you ask yourself, can I convert or anti-simplify three-fifths into a fraction uh, in the tenths family, like tenths, hundreds, thousands? And the answer is, of course. I can turn fifths into tenths very simply. I multiply it by two halves, one, the form of one. So that's six-tenths or 0.6. There we go. So that's converting by anti-simplifying. A number like seven twenty-fifths, can I make it tenths, nah, hundredths? Yes, hundredths. So multiply it by four fourths, that's 28 hundredths. Game over, there's our decimal, 0.28. Here's another one, 17 five hundredths. Well, tenths, nah, hundredths, no, thousands, thousands, I've got a shot. Let's multiply it by two over two, two halves, or one. That'll give me 34 thousandths, and there's our decimal kind of fraction, right? Thousands. So point, oh, we got to go three decimal places, tens, hundred, thousand. Just make the 34 end up at, in the thousands place. We're going to need a zero to hold the place. There we go. Very nice. Looking okay? Now, the bad news is, is that some fractions, it's a little harder to see how to uh, anti-simplify into one of those uh, decimal type fractions, tens, hundred, thousands. Um, or, in fact, sometimes impossible. Well, the good news is, is that there's this other way to convert fractions into decimals that always work. It, 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 all, it would have worked even for these three that we have on the board right now. Uh, we just could see those through anti-simplifying. We're going to do it by dividing. And hopefully that makes sense because fractions correspond to division. So that's, how, that's what we're going to do. Three eighths is a decimal in disguise. Every real number is a decimal in disguise. So it's a little harder to see what to convert that into, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. cetera. Um, so let's try this other way. We're gonna divide it. So let's take three and we'll divide it by eight. Three eighths is the same as three divided by eight. Well, eight doesn't go into three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that three is really 3.0. I dropped the decimal point and a zero. I also put the decimal point in the answer uh, as well to keep track of that. So let's do eight into 30 now. That goes in three times because three times eight is 24. We'll do that subtraction, we get a six. We can add another zero because adding zero on the end doesn't change anything in terms of the value uh, and bring that down. Eight into 60 goes seven times because seven times eight is 56. Uh, subtract it, we get four. We need one more zero right there, and eight goes into 45 times, doesn't it? Five times eight is 40. Look at that, we get zero. So three eighths in its decimal form is 0.375, okay? So this division thing can always work. Um, try another one just to just to make sure if you want to uh, pause the video uh, and try to find the decimal version of 5 16 go for it 
I'm going to keep, if not, I'm going to keep going, uh, but we can always check in after, okay? All right, let's do 16, oh, sorry, 5 sixteenths. So we'll do 5 divided by 16. All right, um, let's, five, 16 does not go into 5, so we'll drop the decimal point again, put it up on top. Uh, it goes 3 times, 3 times 16 is 48, subtract another 0, it goes 1 time. 4 left over, one more zero, 16 into 40 twice, goes twice, right? There's two 16s in 40, 32, whew, is this going to end soon? 16 into 80, five times, oh boy, okay, whew, that was a lot of long division, okay? It's not the most enjoyable thing on the planet, but we can always go to it, it's always going to be there. All right, so guys, we got it. 5 sixteenths is really 0 0.3125, looking good. All right, here's just one more. So this will be kind of like a cool down, right? This will be easier to divide than the last one. Um, one third. Well, if we take one and divide it by three, three does not go into one, so we'll drop the decimal point, put it up top there and add that zero onto the end. 3 into 10 goes 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract it, we get 1. Hmm. Saw that one before. Uh, here, let me drop a 0 down here. And we get to 10. We definitely saw 10 before. 10 to, divided by 3. Uh, 3 goes into 10 3 times. Wait, I'm having deja vu. Didn't we just think of that? 9. Subtract. 10 minus 9 is 1. Wait a minute. Man. I bring down a zero, it's the same question again. 10 divided by three, or how many times does three go into 10? Three times. Wait a minute, this is going to keep happening. We're just gonna be repeating this over and over again, aren't we? Wait a minute, this, that means it's gonna be like 0.3333333. That three is just gonna repeat forever. Man, that is wild, wild. This will never end. Some decimals go on forever. This one third thing is so bizarre. But man, that's gonna be all over the place then. Because like, now we got seven and one third. That'll be 7.33333. Whew, this is weird. This is weird. Man, I, are there are a lot of these. Well, here, let's try this one. 311. So let's put it in its decimal form. Okay, well, let's do the division. If you want to pause and check in with me after you're done, that's great. If not, keep going. 311. All right, 11 doesn't go into 3, so I'll drop that decimal point in the 0. Goes 2 times, 22. Leaves you with 8. Put that down. 11 into 80. Or 80 divided by 11, we get 7, 77, 3, oh, wait a minute, there's that 30. We saw that before, 11 into 30 goes 2 times. Oh, man, wait, we just saw that. If we put this down, 11 into 87 times again. This is just going to continue this over and over again, too. So 3 elevenths is 0.272727. The 27 is just going to repeat forever. Man, there are lots of these, lots of these repeating decimals. All right, well, tell you what. Because they happen so often, people came up with a notation for them. So like the one-third as 0.33333, you can just write it as 0.3 with a little bar over that 3. That tells people that the three is just going to repeat over and over again. Huh? Kind of a cool notation. And our number three elevenths, it was 0 0.272727272727, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7, blah, blah, blah. So in that case, it's the 2, 7 block that repeats over and over again, right? Still pretty cool notation. It saves us from writing a lot of stuff. Um, if you had three digits that repeat, like 0 0.793793, 793, et cetera, et cetera, you just put the bar over all three or something like 0.16666, you know, 
it eventually repeats. So we would just want to tell them that the six repeats, not the one, just the six. So we would do it like that. Okay, so point one and then six with the bar over it. Looking okay? All right, these are pretty wild. Um, tell you what, let's, let's practice a little bit with this. Let's arrange these numbers, these five numbers, in order from smallest to largest, starting on the left. We got those five. So we've got five slots. Can you guys take a look through there? Just, just yell out, what's, what's the clearest, the smallest one? What is clearly the smallest one? Anybody want to yell it out? Wait, who did I hear? Is that you? No, not you. Behind you. No, in front of you. To your left. My left. Good. Yes, you. With the No, with the glasses. No, the black glasses. All right, yes. Good. 0.8614, right? That's the smallest. All the other numbers are, they have a whole number with them, right? Eight and something, or 86 and something. But 0.8614, that's the smallest. Let's put him in place. We'll take it off the board. Same thing, same glasses. Yes, good. The biggest is 86.14. Nice. We'll put that one down, take it off the board. Now the other three, they're all eight something, eight point something. So let's go through and see who's who's the what's the order amongst those three. Well, oh, good idea, computer. Instead of the six one with the repeating bar, let's write out the six one six one. That way we can go through and examine the numbers digit by digit. In the ones place, it's a tie. In the tens place, it's a tie. In the hundreds place, it's a tie. All right, thousands place, good. Now we got some difference, now we can decide. And in fact, look, the number with the three in the thousands place, that's the smallest, so we'll put him down. Then the number with the four in the thousands place, that's the next one. And then lastly, the, the number with the six in the thousands place. So there, oh, you know what, that's kind of big. Let's put it back the way it was with the repeating bar. Okay, we got it. I think these, these, this idea about every number being a decimal, that's going to help us out. We might be able to use this in some things that we did before. Um, like, for example, if you want to know which is greater, three-fifths or five-eighths, this is a problem we did, you know, a while back. Um, maybe our knowledge of decimals can help us with this. First of all, wait, is this an obvious comparison? Do they have the same denominators? No. Same numerators? No. Okay, it's not obvious for that. Less than a half, bigger than a half? Nah, they're both bigger than a half. So this is not obvious. So in the past, what we would do is we would get a CD, right? That was our option before. We would get a common denominator, and that would make it obvious. But now here's a new option. What if we converted them both into decimals? Well, if we take 3 fifths and 5 eighths, 3 fifths, we did this one before, but just as a reminder, we can convert this into tenths by anti-simplifying. So it's just 0 0.6. 5 eighths, all right, that's a little harder. Let's, let's go ahead and do the division. So 5 divided by 8. Uh, so you drop the decimal point there and there. Uh, so 6 times, that's 48. Subtract it, we get 2. Bring down the 0. 8 into 20 goes 2 times. Oh, wait a minute, guys. You know what? Can't we just stop right here? The top number, 3 fifths, is 0. 0.6, and 5 eighths is 0. 0.62 something something. Maybe, you know, we haven't finished the division, but maybe we don't have to, right? We could just see right away it's a tie in the tenths place, but in the hundreds place, top has a zero, bottom has a two, game over, right? All right, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to complete it just for the heck of it. 8 into 40 goes 5 times. Boy, I almost don't have enough room. <laughs> there it is. So 5 eighths is 0.625. So yeah, this is what I meant. If we just line up the two decimals, right, it, it's uh, pretty obvious now, if, especially if I drop in a zero right here. Look at this. In that hundreds place, the 2 is bigger than 0, so therefore 0 0.625 is bigger. In other words, 5 eighths is bigger. Looking okay? All right, one last thing before we call it a day. Since percents are so incredibly important, I think it's important that um, we know how to convert 
uh, see them in decimal form uh, with these fractions so we can estimate or round to the nearest percent. Well, three eighths, we know this before. This is the first one we did um, at the beginning of this lesson. Three eighths, we said by division was 0.375. Well, if you want to round to the nearest percent, we, we know how to do that. Now that we've got it in def decimal form, nearest percent or nearest hundredth, look to the place to the right. All right, it's a five, so that means we're gonna uh, round our hundreds digit up to 0.38. So guys, that means three eighths rounded to the nearest percent is 38%. Looking okay? All right, wonderful, wonderful. Guys, this new knowledge about every real number being a decimal, that's gonna help us out immensely because We've got basically every real number now. There's one group left, and we've left it to the end. We'll talk about them in our next lesson. Take care, guys.